So in math, we like shortcuts. We have to do a lot of writing because we need to show our steps. So whenever we can have something that we don't have to write, we like to avoid it. And what we have in math are what are called invisible numbers. Most invisible numbers are invisible ones. No. Okay, so let's think about what you guys already know. If I show you the number three, it's got some invisible ones with it. Oh. Draw a line underneath it. And in yellow, show that invisible one. All whole numbers are fractions over an invisible one. When we start multiplying or dividing or adding subtracting fractions, we usually have to make it visible. But most of the time we leave it invisible because we don't really need to write it. We just know that it's there. It also has an invisible one here. It has an invisible exponent of one. So all whole numbers have an invisible one underneath them and they have an invisible exponent here of one. And there's another one. In front of them all, we have an invisible one being multiplied by it. This really becomes important as we start dealing with negatives because sometimes there's invisible negative ones. So if I have a number that, let me do it with a variable. This happens a lot in algebra. I have a negative x. It's not by itself. Neither is the variable x. If I have an x, it means I have one x, and there's an invisible one in front of it. This one's invisible one isn't positive, it's what? Negative. And we know that because that negative sign is there. Okay, so that's important for us to just think about because when we start subtracting integers, there's some kind of crazy looking problems. Let me find an example here. So here's some more invisibles. Actually, let's change the title of this from invisible ones to invisible ones and signs. Because often when we're subtracting integers, we're really doing the same thing we were doing when you guys were adding integers. We're just leaving the plus sign out. So if I write 5 minus 9, that's saying the same as if I was going to say 5 plus negative 9. Do you guys see what I mean by shortcuts? This took a lot more writing, didn't it? I had to add the parentheses and I had to add the plus sign. When we're putting five and negative nine together, remember plus just means and in math. If I have a five and I have a negative nine, picture it on the number line, I'm starting at five and now I have a negative nine, I'm gonna go down. How many places? And I'm gonna end up at? Negative four. Negative four. So when you guys see subtraction, like this, and you've been seeing this since you were in elementary school, but nobody told you, it's really just addition with a negative. In this case, we're ending with a negative answer, but you guys have seen problems like this ever since you learned how to subtract, yeah. right? What is six minus three? three? Three. Look at the number line. You're starting at six and going down how many places? Three. Okay, well, let me rewrite this with the, the plus sign visible. Okay. This equals six, plus negative three. It's the same thing. Over here, the plus sign was invisible. But we have a six and a negative three, which means we're, we're really putting them together. The signs just tell us which direction on the number line to move. Okay, so here is the kind of problem I really wanted to talk about today. What if I have 9 
minus parentheses negative 2. There's two invisible things there. Can you picture where they are? There's two invisible things. One's a symbol and one's a number. If it's a number, it's going to be number what? One. one. Where do you guys think it might be? It's right here. There's also an invisible plus sign. Where do you think that would be? It's right here. So I'm going to rewrite this and make all of those things visible. I'd like you to do the same. 9 plus negative 1 times negative 2. When I have negative or 9 minus negative 2, this is my shortcut way of writing all of this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now think back to PEMDAS. We have to do multiplication and division before we do addition and subtraction, right? This right here is a multiplication problem. I have to multiply negative 1 times negative 2. And if I multiply negative 1 times negative 2, I'm multiplying two negatives, which means I'm going to get what? Positive. 9 plus 2. What does it equal? 11. So here's the trick. I don't want you guys to think you have to make all the invisibles visible, but when you see a problem like this, where there's a negative sign in front of a parentheses with a negative number in it, you need to think, oh, that's multiplication and it's going to turn positive. And it's always going to take the number inside and just turn it positive because we're multiplying it by a negative 1. Does the number change if we're multiplying it if by 1? No, remember identity property? Anything multiplied by 1 stays the same. What's going to change here is the symbol. These two negatives will make this become a positive. Okay? So, I want you to draw a line under and write what you know about invisible numbers and symbols. Why do we have them? And what number and sign are they usually? I want you to write what you now know about invisible numbers and signs. And next time you get water at the sink, there's a drawing over there somebody made for me last year about invisible ones. It's kind of funny. Next time you're over there, take a peek.